This is a 2020 Yamaha MT-03. Right here, we have what is known as the OEM dorky looking tail section. We're going to install this kit here. Bolts in here and here and removes this entire section with this beautiful clean billet made in America aluminum bracket here, like this for a much cleaner tail. All right, you're gonna to wanna to start by removing your rear seat. Next, using a three millimeter hex tool, you're gonna to wanna to take this trim panel off. On the inside of this tray, you have to pop these things. You just press something into them like that, and then they, they come out like that, and then you just lift the tray out. With your three millimeter tool, remove this panel here. Pay attention to these clips up here, near the edge of this panel that's coming off. You have to unclip that, and then there's a post right there that plugs into that rubber grommet part right there. You have to pop that out. Repeat the procedure for this side, another three millimeter bolt, and then wiggle the panel out of the rest of the body. You're gonna need some sockets for the next part. Locate an eight millimeter socket, a socket extension. Apply the socket extension to the socket, like that. Now you're gonna grab the appropriate socket. You're gonna stick your extension on there. You're gonna check the ratchet. It's set to tight and we're gonna set to loose. Remove these two seat bolts with your socket. Now you can see the battery and the rest of the undersea electronics. There's a giant heat sink here. Imagine that's an ECU or some kind of heat generating thing. Actually, this looks more like the ECU. See this giant bundle of wires here? This is probably some kind of heat producing electronic relayer resistor or something. I don't know if you know what that is. Maybe it has to do with a starter motor, something high current. There's some thick, big cables going into here. I imagine that's from the battery to the starter motor. It's a high current device. We can see it's a 7.4 amp hour, 12 volt, 20 amp hour battery, a GTZ 8V by GS. Oh, sorry, camera missed that. Okay, under the seat, there's gonna be a bundle in this bracket right here with three sets of wires. This is ones for the tail light, and one's for the turn signals and the license plate light. So go ahead and follow those along and you see if you tug on them, they'll tell you which one they go to. Go ahead and unplug those. I found it really useful to move this stuff out of the way and then use a screwdriver with a small flat tip like that to get these things disconnected. All right, these are the three connectors. There's a black one, a yellow colored one, and a white colored one. Make sure you disconnect all of those. Those are the ones that go into the tail assembly. Using a 10 millimeter socket, you're gonna to to remove these four bolts right there. So this is what we've removed so far. Bolts get a washer like that and go into the bracket like this. It's going to go upside down. So you're probably going to do one bolt at a time. You have four more washers and four lock nuts in there like that. That's what you're going to attach it with. Good luck. Caution, this is a weird four and a half millimeter head, hex head on these bolts. Start with one. Then grab a washer and a lock nut and install the bracket, holding it with one. Looking at this from the bottom, there's a beautiful tray spot there for that to plug into. Absolutely clean. These lock nuts are 10 millimeter. With your tool from the bottom, the four and a half millimeter hex, and your 10 millimeter socket on the top, you're gonna need to use both hands and kind of hug the seat and do it like that with both hands. All right, now that looks clean. No goofy lights, none of that stuff. You can see on the inside, the bolt sticking out. It's a nice tight fit. If you're feeling ambitious, you can add your turn signals back. You have to disassemble that thing over there, that, that big whale tail thing. Take the wires out, you can feed it in and mount it. I'm not gonna do that for now. Yeah, make sure to plug everything that you moved back into where it came from. Put a small bit of packing tape over the holes to keep dust out. All right. There it is, clean tail kit. Absolutely fantastic, and so that stupid whale tail crap coming off the back. I have it plugged into my battery tender. Battery's fully charged, thankfully. 
wired that in too while I was in there. That's kind of tricky. Here's electricity. Goes around here, comes into this. That's just a fluke meter. Beautiful, 83 Mark III. Thank you, Drake Doyle. Goes up into here, into this connector. That snakes around inside and goes up like that to the battery hidden up in there. Keeping lead acid batteries fully charged with a battery tender like this genius 1100 milliamp hour unit here makes them last longer. In lead, you've got lead oxide and lead and sulfuric acid and water. And the sulfuric acid wants to convert the lead and lead oxide to lead sulfate. It's called sulfation or self-discharge. This device right here, an automatic battery charger, a wicked smart charger, Noco Genius. What it does is it sends current into the battery and that produces electrocalomic force to keep the acid from eating the plates or corroding them and turning them into sulfate. That makes your batteries last longer. When you drive your car, it does that automatically. Keep your batteries on a tender or drive your vehicles three hours per week and the alternator will do the tending for you. Look, there's an ant. We find these ants in here sometimes. Arthropods, real small, less than a gram, a tiny little creature. It's just so clean and artistic now. I don't mean to go on and on about it, but look at how clean that looks. That's beautiful compared to that dorky looking crap that came on there from the factory. Maybe next time I'll mount some turn signals. I know that's good for safety. I just love no wires. It's so clean, skeletonized looking. Absolute stunner. Well, thanks again for watching.